Good morning. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. If you will stand here at Ridgeville Church of God, we believe in speaking life. Do you like to speak life or death? We hope life. Amen. Um, I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. Lord, your word and your spirit, they comfort me. I am increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Through your covenant, I am healthy. I am blessed. There is nothing missing, nothing broken. You have made me a blessing, and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Oh, Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Praise the Lord. Just look around. A good looking congregation. It's good to have each and every one of you here. And I'm, I'd like for you to be back tonight at 6 p.m. We'd be glad to have you. I know we have some guests here. We want you to feel at home and let the Lord bless you. And I hope he'll bless you so much that you will either come back tonight or Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And uh, be blessed again. Please be seated. Today is May 1st, first Sunday of May, and we have four more. And what do we celebrate on this day? Warm Sunday. And, and for those of you that don't know what WARM is for, it's an acronym for uh, widows and retired ministers. And we take up money for them, donations or whatever. Some give every month to help out. And we send this money to them once a month. And then we double it up around Christmas. And we have seven of them on the campground. They're retired people. And we help them. And this church has been doing that for quite a while. And God has blessed this church. And he's blessed the givers. And you know, you cannot outgive God. So I'd like to encourage you today to prayerfully support this, this uh, and with your finances, this ministry. And it is a ministry. And I love God. And I, I love those people. You know, they work for the Lord and now they're retired. And it's not a whole lot of money. But, you know, when you don't have a whole lot coming in, uh, it doesn't take much to really help out. And you notice it. I know because I'm retired, you know. <laughs> Church planning meeting today at 430, so let's remember that. The staff and the department heads, please be here by 430 this afternoon. Mother's Day is next Sunday. And um, if you have your mother, always be glad and show her that you love her. I lost mine in 1997. I still miss her. <clears throat> And so I, I thank God that we celebrate Mother's Day. And uh, our first lady will be speaking and there will be no PM service next, <clears throat> excuse me, next Sunday evening. And please spend time with your family, spend time with your mother. And also the ladies ministry meeting will be next Tuesday and that's Tuesday week on the 10th. So let's keep that in mind at 7 p.m. And next Saturday, May 14th at 8 p.m., uh, will be the men's breakfast at Perkins in Somerville. And I'm looking forward to that. I like to go to Perkins for breakfast. It's good to be with the men. And men, if you have not been coming, please do so. We'd be glad to have you at Perkins in Somerville at 8 a.m. on the 14th. Now, let me take your praise reports and our prayer request. And I want to start on my left over here, sister. Amen. Yes. You know, God is able. 
God has performed for all of us, whether we realize it or not, because God does things a lot of times behind the scene. And I thank him for those too. When I pray, I thank him for those things that he did for me that I don't even know about, but I know God did it because of my life and how I've seen things go. Anybody else in that section before I move? Anybody? Okay. Um, how about this section here? Sister Carter? Amen. Praise God. And God promised to be with us always. Yes. I saw another hand back there. Sister. Amen. Yes. Anybody else in that section before I move, sister? Amen. Pray. Amen. Me too. I'm so thankful. And I'm so thankful for all of you. And I love all of you. Very, very much. Anybody else in this section before I move? Okay, how about this section here? Anybody? Brother Gary? Yes. Amen. Anybody else before I move? Okay, extreme right. Sister? Amen. Yes. Anybody else in that section? Amen. We'll keep on praying about that. Anybody else in that section before I move? Up on the platform? Pastor? Uh, Sister Chrissy, we sent us a text this morning letting you know that her father's in the hospital. She's on the way up to be with him. Uh, hopefully, I'm assuming that he's able to hear us this morning. And so uh, if you'll pray for him, this would be my brother. He'll remember my family from travel uh, this week. Amen. I'll be praying. I've already been praying about it. And I'm going to keep on until they're back in town. <laughs> we, I miss them when they're out of town, you know. I love our pastor and his family. Um, anybody else before we pray? Brother? It is, yes. If you haven't been coming, you've been missing out on some good testimonies. Let's uh, also remember my wife, Audrey. She's under the weather this morning. Now, she was telling me this morning that when she went to the doctor's office and uh, the woman that drew her blood um, had the sniffles, I said, did she have a mask on? She said, no. Now, Audrey's sick and... Um, just remember her in this prayer. I checked her temperature, and it was well within the limits, 98.4. And I thank God for that. Um, but she's just laying around all the time. She coughs a good bit. I offered to take her to urgent care yesterday, but she said no. And, uh, and when Audrey says no, she means it. <laughs> Would you stand, please? <laughs> Hasn't God been good to all of us? And thank God for this Lord's Day that... He has allowed us to be together. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you, Lord, for loving us, for making all this possible, Lord, for every person that you've sent this way. We thank you. We thank you for all the blessings, oh God, you bestowed upon us. 
And we know we don't deserve them, but we thank you because you bestowed them upon us and knowing that you love us and you've done this for us, Lord God, and we thank you for it. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every prayer that you've answered and every prayer that you're going to answer. Lord, we thank you for the traveling mercies coming. We pray that you'll give us traveling mercies throughout this day and in the time to come, oh God. Just keep us safe. And Lord, you heard every prayer request given in. And there are needs. You heard them and you know why. The different ones said what they did and we pray that you'll intervene in behalf of every one of these prayer requests. And take care of them, Lord God. And we know that when you do it, it'll be done right. And we know there's nothing too hard for you. And we pray that you continue to bless here. May everything you said and done in this facility and the one in the back be according to your will. Bless our praise and worship team as they do what you've called them to do and bring us into your presence with praise, Lord God, and bless and anoint our pastors. He brings the word and may we receive it in the way that you would have us to. And may the name of Jesus be lifted up in every heart today. And we leave here. Help us to realize and know beyond the shadow of a doubt we've been in your presence. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of Joshua, it's customary here for us to read Scripture prior to taking up the offering. And while you're turning, let me say thank you for those that uh, attended the outreach last Sunday. Uh, I was telling the Wednesday night crowd the blessing that it was to see some of our younger children, Joshua and Bryson, was with us. And it's one thing to fight over toys at home. And I know we've seen those things take place and all. But these kids were fighting over who's going to ring the doorbell. And if we can maintain excitement like that, planting seeds going around praying and we were able to knock on about 46 homes in uh, less than a two hour span now we could have increased that number if you would have joined us and so next time i hope you'll join us and we'll get through it all but we're trusting and believing that some of those are going to show up right here amen? amen amen before i give in to the joshua let me do one other announcement I want to bless our military, and it's one thing to bless those that we do not know, but we have some here that serve. I've served, I've been overseas, and one thing that means the world to us is a care package. And so out in the foyer, you'll see we have Taylor, and we have Jeremy, that's uh, Phil and Helene's son. We want to send them a care package. And I'm going to put up a box and you can come and bring. There's a list of things that you can give. Now, there's some things you can't give. Don't bring no liquids, no candy, none of those kind of things. But I think all of us, whether you have money or not, can send an encouragement letter. And a letter that says, hey, we love you. But more than that, we can cover them in prayer. We need coverage over our military to maintain the freedom that you and I have. And so the deadline for all of that will be on the 15th. Uh, so just uh, being mindful for that. But let's look at Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Here we go, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law of Moses. My servant commanded you, do not turn it to the right hand or the left, that you may prosper. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth and you shall meditate on it day and night that you shall observe to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Finish right here in verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you you go who's thankful that god's with you amen so i'm here today to pray that god would bless you this isn't a prosperity gospel 
I can't promise you that when you give to the house, that God's going to give it right back in finances. But I can promise you, as a child of God, he will take care of you. Would you hold your offering in ties? Father, we thank you that you care enough for us to make a way where there seems to be no way. So here we are today, God, trusting you knowing that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So in the moments that we feel like we're in this thing all by ourselves, let us go back to Joshua and understand that you said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that we can conclude in verse 9 here that we read already today that knowing that you are going to take care and that the Lord our God is with us everywhere we go. So Father, I pray today that you would bless that as we go our separate ways when this service is concluded that this week would be a week of blessings. That we would walk in the favor and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That you would anoint even what we give to you today. Anoint our offering. Anoint our praise. Anoint our tithes. God, would you anoint our attitude that we've come in here today in a spirit of expectation. So God, I pray that you would bless everyone here. Everyone who's watching us through social media. Lord, let them feel the presence of God. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Would you come and bless the Lord this morning?
above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. God, and we thank you, Lord, you and Holy Spirit for being here today. Thank you. 
sing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You've turned graves into gardens. You've turned bones into armies. Into highways, you're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes, you turn shame into glory.
Amen. If you're grateful for what God's done for you, would you just let him know today? Give him a round of praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're great and worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to John chapter 21. I told you on Wednesday night to be praying and for this morning's message and I told Brother Smoke, I feel like the Lord has been encouraging, but the enemy has been attacking. You ever been there? And I've come to give you a message from the Lord. But I also know that the enemy wants to bind down what God wants to do. So I want you to fight back. But in John chapter 21, begin reading in verse 1. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, And two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said unto him, or to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you. And they went out and immediately they got in the boat and they were out all night and caught nothing. Can anybody relate? (laughs) Amen. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood at the shore. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any food? And they answered him and said, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And so they cast And now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garments, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in a little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, fish laid upon it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broke. And Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing that this was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them and the fish likewise. Finally, verse 14. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. God bless the reading of the words. You may be seated. I was reading this passage as I told you on Wednesday night even that over the next couple of weeks, we're going to follow the the timeline of Jesus leading up to the Pentecost Sunday or leading up to his ascent at at the Mount. And that's June the 5th that we'll conclude that. But I want you to see some things that jumps off at me. And if I could even somehow title this message, it would simply be there are some things I don't have to ask. There are just some things that I don't have to ask. And I know, let me just help you. I know that someone is going to criticize. You will always have a critic in your life. You will always have someone that thinks they can do a better job than you. And the truth is they can't. 
And that's why they criticize you. Now, on the other hand, there will be people who talk about you. There will always be those who think they can do better than you. And truth is, there are some. Let's be real. But God called you to be you. There ain't nobody that can do you better than you. We can imitate somebody's voice. We can act like somebody. We can talk like somebody. We can make facial expressions like somebody. But at the end of the day, there's only one you. Even if you got a twin, there's still only one you if they did the DNA. Because you are unique and you were wonderfully made in the eyes of God. There's some things that you can't tell me that is not absolute. Two plus two is four. Right? Come on, y'all, y'all, you you know, okay. You can't convince, well, I hope you can't convince nobody. Whether it's common core or the old way of math, two plus two is still four. You can't tell us there's no difference. How many hours is in the day? All right, at least we're, we're agreeing on some things. 365 days in a year, right? Except one year. We got to add a year or a day. And so we got 366. And the reality is this, that there are some things that you can't argue. And there are some things that you and I need to understand. In order to be alive, I got to be born. There ain't nobody walking this. Our, my son and my daughter are in these video games, Brother Derek. And, and my son, my daughter say, well, who is that? And he says, that's AI. Y'all know what AI is, right? Artificial intelligence. And so this AI is nothing but a computer. A computer isn't alive. A computer isn't born. Somebody didn't carry that computer for nine months and go through the birth canal or have a C-section and pop it on out. I know it's not really that easy on popping it out, okay? I'm just saying. But we put stock in things that are not alive and act as if it's the absolute truth. I've come by today to tell somebody that there is only one way to heaven. That is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. It is the absolute truth. There is just some things that I don't have to ask. Now, I begin to think about this as this breakfast scene was unfolding in front of my mind as I was reading it and following this. Why did they say we dare not? Look at it. We dare not. In verse 12, we dare not ask him, who are you? Why? Number one, Scripture tells us that this is the third time that they've seen him. How often have you and I seen God and we still ask, who are you? Was it the idea that before on the boat and they were tossing and turning and and they thought he was a ghost and all of a sudden he comes and he gives peace to the storm and they say, what manner of this that even the winds and the storms obey him? Okay, I I, I can see. The next time I see him, maybe there's a resemblance of who he is, but I believe this time was different. See, I believe this time Hearing him say, cast the net, and hearing him, maybe as they got closer, Scripture says they weren't too far from the land. Maybe they began to see when he says, hey, come have breakfast. Maybe they saw his scars. Maybe they saw what resembled the God that they were serving. But whatever it is, you and I have to understand the enemy is always going to make you question God. Listen, we talked last Sunday about doubt, John chapter 20. But in John chapter 21, we run into this thing to where Jesus is gone and they're going fishing. And all of a sudden, they need an encounter to reassure them that God is who he said he is. I need some reassurance that I'm not getting old. I went 
Yesterday drove my wife and my family. Isaac was in this symphonic band. They went and competed, and I'm so proud that the Bose Middle School, they got superior with distinction. That's all A's. If, you know, in the music world, they did great. But I had to walk that park. I'm getting old. My legs hurt. And I have a six-year-old, almost, that wants to ride a bunch of rides. Now, I thought I could handle some of these. I'm almost 46 years old. Now, we used to jump off of homes and think nothing of it. We used to ride the highest roller coasters and shoot down and think nothing of it but a bunch of little, ah, and we're good. That wasn't me. That was those on the ride. Because my daughter, when we were riding, she was like, why are they screaming? This ain't scared. But that little roller coaster that we was on yesterday that slung us this way and slung us back this way, I wasn't so sure I wanted the big one. I'm getting old. But I needed some reassurance. But here's the thing. We need reassurance on things that doesn't really matter. Does it matter that I'm getting old? Mm -mm. As long as I make the most of my age and my abilities. But here's the thing. I could have easily stopped a six-year, almost six-year going on 21. Help us, Jesus. We could have stopped her joy. We could have told Isaac, you're not going there and, and robbed him of some things. And I think because we question God so much, we rob the church of blessings. We rob ourselves of blessing. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless me. But when the Lord says this is coming, we produce a doubt. We need some reassurance. And so what's the reassurance? It's when we come to church and a move of God takes place. And it reminds us that God is still God. It reminds us that we're not uh, all in this journey by ourselves. It reminds us that he's not slack concerning his promises. I'm here today to tell you that Jesus gave multiple invitations in scripture look in John 1 and 39 he says come and see we can turn over to Matthew 11 28 and 29 and Jesus says come to me all you who are weak and weary and I will give you rest in, in Mark 6 and 31, again, he talks about come and get some rest. In 21, John 21 and 12, come and dine. We even see in Matthew 25, uh, 34 through 36, that you should come and inherit the kingdom of God. So when God says, come to an altar, when God says, come to church, when God says, come into my presence, why do we doubt? Why is there hesitation? Because see, if we pray like we're supposed to, if we read like we're supposed to, if we engage God like we're supposed to, we should know it's his voice. But too often, the church has become bashful in worshiping God. We become hesitant or resistful in worshiping God. And I'm here today to tell you, we got too many Thomases and we don't need no more. I mean, Thomas, we need you. But we don't need more people that doubt. We need more people that believe. I believe he's coming back just like he said. I believe it's going to happen. And I want it to happen now. But I understand this, that as you and I begin to define the reality and the absolute truth of God, if you continuously question him, you'll never believe him. See, the Bible lets us know that if any ask of God, he will give it to you. That word ask simply means this. Now, I want you to take this and, and, and we're going to connect it to verse 12 of John 21. Watch, the word ask is defined as something to, in, in order to obtain an answer or gather more information. Why do I need more information as to who God is? Listen, look, it says, and they dared not ask him, are you the Lord? 
They didn't need him to reveal himself again. They knew at this point this was the third time. This is not the third time that they seen him. It was the third time since his resurrection. You can't tell me he's dead. If God has visited me more than once, you can't tell me he's dead. God has visited his church, but yet some believe he's still dead. God has answered prayers, but yet we doubt whether he'll answer the next one. And we got to get back to a day that we worship God. God, whether you answer this prayer doesn't matter. I'm here to worship you. Izzy and Isaac, again, they, you, you know, they entertain themselves some. And she says, you know what? I'm not worried about whether somebody has more money than me. I'm just going to play the game. And I wonder if we could have that attitude in church. I'm not concerned whether or not God blesses everybody and excludes me. I'm still coming to worship God. Because I know my day is coming. We can't expect God to bless us every time we enter into His courts because if we do, we become content. We lose the attraction to God. We begin to get this sense of entitlement. Could you imagine always going to the bank and always having money and never work for it? I can't either. I don't know. You know. But could you imagine going and withdrawing money and it never reduces? What would you do the next time you go withdraw money? You get more. Then why don't we do that in church? When we come and we're worshiping God and he begins to deposit into us, if it is great, if it is a blessing to us, why don't we come back for more? Why don't we seek him so that he can refill us and expand us? I want my bank account to expand. Don't you? Spiritually and physically, right? But if we're not careful, we'll become, I'm good with my little bit of week. But watch what happens in the disciples' lives. I want you to see this. This is the place that we got to get to. In, in, In verse 12, again, it says, And knowing that it was the Lord. Then Jesus took bread and he broke it and gave it to them. We got to have communion with God again. Not talking about here's a wafer, here's a little drink, and we don't know how long it's been in the bottle. Not drunk, guys. I'm, you know, if you get drunk off that little bit, you, you uh, anyway, shouldn't be drinking. But what I'm saying is that we miss sitting down with God. The Bible says that Jesus says, hey, come and have breakfast. And there was already a fire going. There was preparation already for them. The coals were hot. Why? Because I believe Jesus wants to let you and I know that if we'll get into the midst of him, there's warmth for a cold heart. There's there's brightness, meaning that something's not dead because when coals are hot, you don't want to touch it. Now, I know some of you grew up in potbelly stoves in your house. We didn't have a potbelly stove. We had a fireplace. And when that coal jumped out, whatever it touched, it scorched. Why can't we let God scorch us? Get into his presence where there is warmth for a a, a hardened heart. But also let him scorch us in such a way that we're marked being able to say that we've been in the true presence of God. There are times that you got to blow the fire. Because the coals have kind of withered down into almost of nothing. But all it takes is a little breath. It's an absolute fact. If you'll allow God to breathe on you again, you can ignite that spirit in you again. You don't have to lay and say, well, I'm waiting on somebody to throw me some good wood. 
Because all of us, well, I don't want to be that, that absolute. Most of us have at least started a fire with no wood. I've started fires with a magnifying glass. Come on, somebody. Why? Because the absolute fact was we have seen it ignite. I didn't need matches. Now, I've not been successful with two rocks and starting a fire. You know, uh, my flints have just been gone. They just, you know, but give me an Eagle Scout. They're going to make it happen. But there are some things that you're not always going to be able to do, but you got to learn to trust others around you. Because God brings them your way. Listen, this, this idea of blessings, I don't want you to miss it because too many churches are aiming to please the people in the church and still the God of the church. Oh, we, we, we're here. They're, they're, they would rather sing to the tithers than sing to the God of provision. They would rather go eat out with the doubters the backstabbers and the God that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We got issues in the church. Every church has issues. But you and I need to understand that God is not the issue. It's his enemy, which should be yours and my enemy. And if we're on the battlefield of the Lord, then we got to get back to this notion that I'm not going to doubt who God is, but I'm going to believe that he's able. John chapter 20, 31, or 30 and 31, it says this. Now, we concluded with this last week, but I want to hit it again. It says, and truly Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these things which are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in him. John is acknowledging that there are other things that Jesus has done. That's not in the book. We can't possibly write down everything God has done. Brother Phil, I'm in agreement with you. These testimonies have been great. Because we get to see that God blesses people in multiple different ways. And, and he's carried them through some things. And it's encouraging to us when we know that God is no respecter of a person. But watch this. John is also saying that my recordings of the accounts of Jesus is not complete. This isn't everything that God is capable of. And yet we hold him only to what we've seen him do for others. Many have been church hurt, including myself, and, and you've heard this expression. I'm not going to church because there's too many hypocrites there. I'm not going to church there, you know, to any church because I've been hurt in church. Well, first of all, I'm not going for the hypocrites. And I'm not going for those that have hurt me, that will hurt me, or will hurt you. I'm going because this is God's house. And we need to reprogram our minds, change the way that we're thinking, and stop allowing excuses to keep us out of church. John is sitting here saying, listen, the Bible was not written merely to create doubt, but to reveal the greatness of God. We focus on the doubts. We focus on the negatives. When's the last time you focused on the goodness of God? Well, preacher, you know, I started paying my tithes and all of a sudden, everything started falling apart. Well, what do you think is going to happen? The enemy doesn't want you to see blessings from giving, he's going to challenge you. The only time in all of Scripture that Jesus says, try me, is in Malachi, which it is in the tithes and often. Try me and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a, a blessing over you. If you don't want to be blessed, then hold your money. But I would much rather God bless me. And we talked about this in the men's meeting. You know, Brother Huey done a great job in, in, in telling us about the testimonies of God. But listen, at, at some point, you have to believe God will do what he says he will do. And I believe that he'll bless. But if I'm given in hopes to receive, 
I'm not a cheerful giver. I'm actually a doubter. And I'm trying God to say, God, I'm going to give, but if I don't see an immediate return, if you know anything about the investment world, you know it's a, a, the ROI, the return on investment. And most people will cancel that investment if there's not an immediate return. God's not on your timetable. If I give today or trust God today, it might be long 20 years before I ever see a return on the investment. But I'm not going to keep waiting and say, well, I'm not going to put any more into the investment until I see this. Because if that was the case, some of your prayers for your spouse and for your children will never materialize for an answer. We got to keep praying. We got to keep believing because, God, I trust you. I know that you're going to save my children. I know that you're going to touch my family. I know you're going to give me this, just this opportunity of an advancement. Because if we're not advancing in God, we're decreasing in God. There's no middle grounds. We need to move forward because, watch, let me, let me show you something real quick. From the very beginning in the book of Genesis, Satan was always raising doubt about God. He goes to Eve. Did God really say that? And he's not stopped asking that question. Did God really say that? Did God really promise that? Did God really show you that? Did God really give you that job? Did God really give you that spouse? Did God really do this? And at some point, you, you, I, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. But when our kids keep saying, mama, 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 how many of you just say, keep, keep saying my name? Keep saying my name. Say my name, say my name. You, you know, daddy, daddy. And it's just like, oh, I just love to have my kids call my name. But at some point, we're just like, what? Now, I know y'all don't ever say that. Y'all, y'all, so, y'all so holy, sanctified, and y'all just say, what is it, honey? Right? But at some point, we really get frustrated. And we say, what? I heard you the first time. Just give me a second. Can't you see I'm on the phone? Can't you see I'm talking to somebody? Hey, hey, mama, 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 and, 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 and it's, oh, they're so cute. But when Satan keeps saying, why? Did he really say? Did he really say? Did he? We entertain that. Do you entertain every time your son, if you entertain every time your kid called your name, you will spoil them. You will tell them that above everything else, you're number one. I'm going to stop live and listen to you. And they will build that concept. But at some point, we just have to what? Oh, this school of hard knocks. Just wait a minute. Can't you see I'm talking? Don't make me get this belt. You won't go to timeout. Uh, whatever your, uh, your, your punishment is. But why don't we punish the enemy when he raises doubt? Oh, did God really say that? Absolutely, he said that. Well, it ain't happened yet. I don't care if he said it, it's coming to pass. It might not happen today, but it will happen before he comes back because he's not a God that he should lie. Matter of fact, God called you the father of lies. So why are we wanting to be daughters and sons of liars? I don't want to follow the father of lies. I want to follow the father of truth. And that everything he says, and this is why it's so important, you need to keep a prayer journal. And so when the enemy comes up, Sister Sherry says, God don't answer prayers anymore. Hold up. Just last week, he answered this. Well, it wasn't a major one. Well, major or not, enough minors equal a major. 
Well, you know, uh, what's a dollar? Keep giving me a dollar. I'll tell you what's a dollar. If what's a dollar, God, keep giving it to me. And I'll show you, it adds up. So the little prayers that God answers, oh, I got a headache. I wish God would help me make the work on time. and Maybe the traffic won't give so much. And we fail to give him praise for the little things. And he says that if you'll be faithful over the small things, I'll make you ruler over many. And he's not saying he's going to make you king. But I do believe that he's saying, if you will bless me on the small things, I will begin to pour out blessings that you're not going to be able to contain. Why? Because I want to be blessed for what I do. Why would we continuously give to people that don't appreciate it? Right? Isn't that what we say? I don't know why that company still keeps some people around. They don't work. All they do is come, they sit on the job, and they just milk the clock. They just milk the check. And they just, well, let's look at the church. Because the Bible says the same things that we judge them by, we will be judged. So if we turn it to the spiritual, I can't believe that all they do is come to church and milk off of everybody else. I can't believe that they would come and want to check for something that they haven't worked for. And in the terms of the check, it would be a blessing. We need to just move the enemy out of the way and come to this place because, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm fixing to wrap this up because some of you are doubting. But doubt creates delays and rejections. The more you doubt, the more you'll reject God. I married above my league, like way, way above. It's like, I, I th- it's kind of like throwing a Hail Mary, <laughs> just hoping the player catches the ball. But the enemy will still look at me and say, she don't really love you. She's just with you. He don't say for your looks, Okay. He don't say for my money. He just simply says, because she couldn't get nobody else. And all of a sudden, it takes that little bit, and a doubt raises. And maybe the enemy has come to you and just said, God's only answering your prayer because of your mama. Because of your daddy, because of your grandma, God's only answering that right now because he's playing a game with you. And in a minute, he's going to pull the rug out from under you, and he's going to laugh when you fall. And you can allow that doubt to settle in your mind and prevent you from moving forward with God. But I'm here today to tell you there are some absolutes. And the absolute is found in the Word of God. He cares about his children. He loves us. He died for us. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless me. So we got to get to a place that we stop believing the doubts. Samantha, if you'll come. And you're going to have to start believing in God. What has God told you lately? Can I, be, can I be real with you, transparent? We know the promises that God has given us. And we started pursuing land that's two lots over. And just a few months ago, the owner of the land said, I'm not selling. And whether we never buy that land or not, doesn't change who God is. But we will rise and fall in our trust of God of whether he answers something like that. Well, pastor must not have been spiritual and he should have known. You should have known when the light was yellow that it was going red. But you didn't stop. You should have known when you wrote that check whether or not you had money in the bank. See, it's easy to criticize. 
But I stand on promises of God. And I believe if God wants that, I believe that he could have her walk through these doors even today with a clean bill and say, here, I'm giving it to you. Because that's the God that we serve. But should it not happen, it doesn't change who God is. His promises are still yes and amen. His promises will still come to pass. And so all we do is regroup. So when we're beat down, and when we're discouraged, and the easy thing is to say, I'm, I'm just giving up on church. You're saying I'm giving up on God. Well, I'm still worshiping him at home, preacher. I still feel him. It's not the same as in church. What if they'd have had Facebook in Jesus' day? There would have been somebody there with a filter trying to make life perfect. My life's not perfect. Your life's not perfect. So why do we try to make it look perfect for everybody else? I don't know how to do Twitter, and I don't know how to do Snapchat, and I don't know how to do all these other things. But almost everything is done for a like, a love, a street. Count the viewership. Well, what good is it to have a million viewers in a life that's not pleasing to God? The scripture is true. What's it matter if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? I'm not here to try to satisfy me. I'm going to preach what God gives me. I'm going to love people. I'm going to be there for people. Because at the end of the day, I know the God that I serve. And I know he loves you as much as he loves me. And we go through some hard times. Wednesday, my family and I will go to a place called Lynchville, Virginia. I've never been there. And if you were to ask me, Brother Brad, how you going to get there? I'd tell you I have no idea. I have no idea unless I look it up. And then I have to put trust in Google, Waze, MapQuest, whatever you use. You know, I mean, I got an atlas, too. I can look at that way, too. And then I still have to hope that it's telling me right. So why don't we do that with God? God's got a destiny for you. Why don't you look it up? And get the directions that's necessary to obtain your destiny. I'm going to free up somebody right now. Your destiny is not what your mama said it is. Your call in ministry is not what your daddy says. It's not what your pastor says. It's not what the denomination says. You are either called or not into ministry by God and God all by himself. Anything else produces a hatred, misery, and a life that will be found displeasing to those around you because you will be miserable. And that's not just for ministry. If your parents are a lawyer and I think you're going to be a lawyer, you'll stink at lawyer if that's not what God's called you to do. Oh, we can do it. I was a fireman. I was great at it. Put out every fire I went to. No fire beat me. <laughs> me in the water. But firemen wasn't what God called me to do. It was only a tool to get me to where I needed to be. But we got too many people that are stopping short of the mountain that God has called them to. Because the journey looks longer than what they're willing to take. You don't know how fast God will, will, will speed you up or slow you down 
if you'll walk in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want you to stand. God's timing. With every head bowed and every eye closed. This morning, I'm, I want to speak to the doubter. Maybe this morning you're doubting whether God's even real. Whether you can even still hear the voice of God. And doubt has consumed you to the point that you become bitter against church, against the mere mention of the name of Christ. And you've been going through, through motions. But I'm here today to tell you that it's time to change your thinking. It's time to believe again. And so if that's you, if, if there is doubt in your mind, this isn't saying that you're backslid. This is just simply saying, Pastor, I'm struggling with some things. If that's you, I want you to look this way and put your head right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you would be here this morning and you would say, Pastor, I'm at this place where I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe he's going to do it. But there are moments that I struggle because I see everyone else seemingly having their prayers answered. And I'm starting to feel left out. I'm starting to feel lonely and isolated. And I need God to just move on my behalf. If that's you, I want you to look this way and put your head right back down. This morning, the Bible says, Where two or three agree in my name, it shall be done. To those that look this way, I wonder if, if you will just join me here at an altar. I want to pray with you. I'm not going to ask you what you're doubting over. I'm not going to ask you where you fall within the parameters of what we ask. But if you need God to do something in your life, I want you to come right now. The altars is not a place to be scared. This is a place where we believe God moves. And we want a trueness of God again in our lives. And I believe that he's moving and stirring God, I know that right now that there are some that is criticizing where we're at in this service. Because the enemy is playing with the mind. There will be those that criticize us through social media. But Lord, we're not here for the criticisms or for the critics. We're here because in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11 that you told us to encourage our brothers in the Lord our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. So we're going to agree this morning if, if God's ever brought you out of something. And you can affirm in your faith that God is who he said he is and that God answers in the way that he says he was. I want you to come behind these and we're going to pray together.
I'm going to pray for every one of you that are here. But I want you to know that you're not in this journey by yourself. Father, as I get ready to pray, the praise team gets ready to sing. Encourage and uplift us that our hope and our faith moves the doubt out of the way. That it's not hinged on what you do for others. But there's a divine appointment, a divine moment that you're going to move no sooner, no less. So help us in our belief to stand firm in every moment that our doubt rages. Lord, let us declare the promise again. So Father, I declare right now the promise that you gave me of how many that we would pastor. I declare right now, God, and I remind the enemy that the promise of the land, you told us to look for land and look for favor. And so, Lord, we don't stand on a rock of doubt, but we stand on the foundation of truth. And we know that the words of God will come to pass. And so, Lord, if it's us standing in the way, I pray, God, that you would encourage us, strengthen us to do what we need to do to bring it to pass. But all the while, God, let our worship show you that we trust you and we believe in you. And so, Lord, it is that, that I come and pray for these here at this altar. Lord, I pray right now that you would touch my brother. In his world, remove the doubt. In everything that he does, faithfulness to you only produces a target for the enemy. To increase the doubt. And God, I pray right now that as we stand in agreement, that doubt decreases and faith increases. I pray today, God, that you would resurrect the fighting spirit that every time that the enemy produces his head, that there's a stomping that goes on and bruises the enemy's head and declare, thus saith the Lord, and we declare unto the enemy, get thee behind me, Satan. Because we know that God's taking us somewhere. We know for a fact that God has called us. And Lord, I want you right now to anoint your son. I want you to take him, Lord, to greater heights. Move the obstacles that he might be able, Lord, to stand firm on the promises of God. Give him strength, wisdom. And oh Lord, allow it every day to be the words that flow out of his mouth. Words of hope and declarations that brings the doubt to an end in an absolute that I know who my Savior is. Blessing God. Blessing Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you would begin doubt, circles our heads, doubt rises that many will never know. But Lord, instead of speaking the words of doubt, may we declare the promises of God. May we reestablish the word. Declare your scripture that God is not slack concerning his promises and that there's a hope that every time she looks in the mirror, there's not a doubt on her call. There's not a doubt on her worth. There's not a doubt on who she is in you before. You said we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. There's purpose. There's purpose. It's not too late to grab hold of the promise. Declare it. Declare it. So God, right now we rebuke the doubt. And we declare victory over the thoughts. 
We speak against the enemy this day. The beginning of May changed the way we're thinking. Let it be thoughts of you. Thoughts of the promise. Think of where we want to go. And know that you have equipped us for our call. No longer. No longer walking in doubt. Bless your daughter. Bless your daughter. Father. Doubt. Can come from many people including ourselves and when the enemy knocks us down as he so constantly does when victory has just been experienced let us focus on things that are true things that are absolute let this day be the day God a change of thought a change of thought will change a perspective. And while we don't have answers, it doesn't change who you are. While the support system may not be as strong, while we may go to a doctor and get new news that pulls the carpet out from under us, let us fall in the hands of God knowing once again that you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Let us speak those things, Lord. Let us declare those things. And let our prayer life resonate and let those things penetrate the spiritual warfare. That there's a rise of a testimony coming. That there's a declaration that needs to come forth. Don't doubt who you are. Don't doubt what God has called you and equipped you to do. You're not here to satisfy the things of men. You're not here for accolades. You're here because of an assignment that God has placed you on. Walk. Walk in faith. See it come to pass. See it come to pass. Believe. Believe right now, Father. There are things that you have spoken. There are things that only you and her know. And God, I'm standing right here in agreement because your word is very clear and we know it to be absolute that where two or three agree in my name, it shall be done. There's blessings coming. There's blessings coming. Hindrances are dissipating. The blocks that have prevented your advancement are crumbling because the praise that you give forth is a praise of belief. The walls are crumbling. And there's a victory dance that's about to come to your spirit. Let it flow. Give it to him. Bless him. Show him the appreciation. And together you will bruise the enemy and destroy him. And the enemy will flee because the God that you serve is all powerful. Can make a difference. Will make a difference. And that petition I feel in my spirit that that petition that you come into this house today for wanting God to do, God has said, consider it done. Consider it done. Done. God, you've spoken. We declare it with belief. Bless your daughter. Bless your daughter. Father, doubt. It will tear down. It will destroy. But there is truth in the Word of God. 
There are absolutes that does not change by time, by circumstances. It doesn't change the message of God. For God says, I am a God that changes not. God has not changed His mind. You hold on to that hope that God has given you. There's something precious that you're holding on to. And doubt is trying to tear it away. But today, grip it hard and fight. Declare the blessings of God. Declare the enemy a liar. Show the enemy that your faith is not wavering. That you believe what God has declared unto you. There's victory coming. There's a breakthrough. Drop it. You've doubted yourself. You've doubted your ability. But God has come by today to empower you. God has come by today to encourage you that you are able through Christ that strengthens me your own ability will bring forth the fall but through God and his sustaining grace there's a giant of a soldier that's rising you've been equipped for the battle God says now go win the war Go win the war. The grip ceases. Bless God. Bless the Lord. Jesus. Father, today, you know your son. You know what he needs. Your word declares that I know your needs even before you make them known unto me. Church is what you know. Church is where you've been. But there are some things that needs a fresh reminder to remove doubt. You're not as damaged as you think you are. God's not written you off. He knows you by name. And he's come by today to bless. So, Father, remove the doubt that has filled this mind. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Speak a word that affirms one more time what you have declared. Fresh revelation. A fresh move. All the questions. God says in time I'll answer them. But worship me. Worship me in the meantime. He has blessed you. Use it for his glory. Blessing God right now. Remove the doubt, fight against it. Know who you are in Christ. Declare I am a son of the Most High. I am valuable. I am worthy. And he does love me. Bless God. Father, a 
whole lot of doubt can rage. Words flow through this mind and it becomes a true battlefield. And there will be many questions that will never find answers. But Lord, I pray today that you would show with a firmness that you love your daughter. That you would show her that you are going to carry her. And that everything that has come into question you're going to bring glory through it there's a breakthrough there's a breakthrough God there's a moment that you never thought that you would get through there's a moment that you have given up the fight and you've said what's the use and God has said because if you'll fight, you'll find me. You'll find my grace sufficient. You'll find my mercy encouraging. I need you not to quit. So today, don't quit. There are eyes watching your walk and although you've walked through the darkest battle that you ever face in your life you have found a sustaining God you have found a God that loves you a God that's helping you one day at a time and God says if you depend on me if you'll depend on me, I will take you to a place that all the hurt comes to an end. That all the questions will begin to find answers. I know you doubt. I know you wonder why. But today God says, you're still my daughter. I still love you. Let me, let me in. Let me in. And I will take it the hurt and the pain and I will make joy beauty for your ashes there's a laugh that's coming there's a laugh that's coming it's going to make individuals proud of you stop fighting don't doubt him trust him trust him Jesus God we thank you moments that we believe that there are miles that you wouldn't travel days that we wake up with confusion on our minds uncertainty we ask ourselves am I doing it right but God says today don't doubt you believe in yourself You were strong. You were mighty. There's a legacy that's being laid. 
don't doubt. Don't doubt. So, Father, I want you to show forth glory. In this home, I want you to move. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Trust the Lord. Trust Him. There's a step that you got to take. There's a step. God says there's a step. She knows a step that she has to take. she's doubted whether or not she would be able God says if you'll reach out to me today I will equip you with strength that no matter the storm that comes you'll find peace in me sustainability in me but you must believe you must believe God, would you bless her right now with belief? Help her, Jesus. Jesus, God. Father, doubt swirls. But Lord, your word is clear. So Father, I pray today that in the midst of confusion, in the midst of wants and desires, that the clearness of your word speaks that worth is not defined or obtained through what others say, but through what God says right now right now remove the doubt you're going to make it you're going to make it God says I've not written you off Your worth has not been defined in my eyes by mistakes. My blood is just as valuable to those that you see that have done no wrong. It's equally as valuable to you. And I've come seeking to save that which was lost. And that's everyone that I have created. Believe my words. Believe my words. A door is coming with decision that has to be made. Will you trust me Or will you trust the doubt? Today is your reminder. I am able, says the Lord, to carry you and sustain you. Will you believe a change of mind? Change of mind. Today's the decision. Today's decision day. Bless God. Produce faith and hope. You're not by yourself. Surrounding with support. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, 
It would have been easy for her to turn around and go back to her seat. So I pray right now, God, that you would reward faith, strengthen. You know today what your daughter needs. You know the doubts that have come into the picture. The battles that are raging. Maybe it's an occurrence of doubt. Maybe it's a season of doubt. Maybe it's a constant doubt. But whatever it is, God, I pray right now that doubt ceases. That there's no need to have to ask the question. For there's already assurance in the mind. That through prayer, assurance has been placed in these hands. There's a warrior. You have fought many battles in silence. And few have been able to celebrate your victories. Today, God says, there's a public victory coming. There's a breakthrough. Your praise will eliminate the doubt. You have asked God. You have asked God of something. Now I feel in my spirit. You've walked in here today. Needing God to tell you something. I believe right now. God is speaking to you. Let the doubts aside. Hear the voice of the Lord. And Father, we pray today that it is without, without argument. It is without any issue that your word says that the sheep know of the shepherd's voice. I want this voice to be so clear. so clear that doubt no longer comes into the picture that you stand on what God is speaking that you stand the enemy is going to fight what God has just declared to you the enemy is coming at you Because your victory is going to free not only yourself. God says it's going to free others. It's going to free others. So Lord, right now, we pray protection over this word. A week from now, a year from now, there's still a strong standing that on the first day of May in 2022, I know for an assurance that I heard what God said. And that my faith will not waver. Doubt will not enter. For I know The special word was given. So bless her right now. Heed the word. Secure the word. And fight. Fight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. 
And there are moments of doubt. Lord, and I want you to move on people's lives. We know that Sister Kathy and Brother Gene want us to lift them up in prayer. And so, God, we're going to do that right now. While an attack on the body is taking place and a recovery is taking place, you are still God. You're not confined by distance. You're not touching people if they just come to an altar. We know that your hand is not slack concerning its promises. So God, I pray that you would move on the body. And as the enemy has come and done its best to tear down, this is a building up moment. Build up the spirit. Build up the flesh. That once again, the head of Satan can be bruised. And that the stripes that you bore would flow into the bodies of these that are sick and afflicted. You know the needs of not just them, but everyone in this house everyone that's tuned in. So God, I pray as I close, would you move? And whether it be a hospital bed where Sister Chrissy's dad is at, or whether it be far distances away and the people that are suffering in Ukraine and Israel and others in third world countries, that they believe your word so much that they're willing to lose their life. Let us not get so comfortable that we don't believe it will happen here. But God, would you empower us to find victory in our storms. So Lord, as I close, I pray that you would touch everyone as they go their separate ways, bring us back tonight at six. Lord, would you minister there? Would you touch every department in this church? God, we're believing in the seeds that have been planted, that a harvest is coming. We pray, God, that you would strengthen us this week, that as we start a week off in May, we will have a mind change and that we believe in the truths and we kill the doubts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you love on somebody? Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord.